Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial, I'm going to go over uh, how to create textures for the tea can here. Uh, so, a basic overview of uh, my setup. I just got a, a tabletop with a wood texture that I put on there. Uh, don't really need to go in depth with that. Uh, anything will do. You don't really need anything fancy. Uh, more important is my light setup, which is super straightforward. It's um, uh, it's just a Skydome light. So I went to Arnold uh, Lights Skydome light, and then I attached an image to the color, which that image is just this art studio. Uh, 2K HDR that I got uh, from HDRI Haven. Just downloaded it for free from there. And then the settings that I adjusted on it are just uh, uh, I, I upped my samples to 5 to reduce some noise. Uh, it's a 2K HDR, so I set the resolution to uh, 2048, and that's about it. So all right, with that, let's get started on texturing. So I'm going to open up my Hypershade, which I'll just click the little, uh, which is under Windows Animation Editor, or uh, pardon me, Rendering Editor's Hypershade, but then there's also just this shortcut right here, this little blue ball. And uh, all right, so what I want to do is I want to make a Arnold. Uh, I'm going to be rendering an Arnold, so I want to make an Arnold shader. So I'll go to the Arnold section, I'll go to Shader, and the standard surface shader is AI, standard surface, rather intuitively. And I'm going to make two of them. So uh, I'm gonna call this one AI can, which I guess I'll do like camel casing can body. And then I'll make a second one. AI can lid. And these are going to end up being copies of each other to some extent, but you'll see the difference, which it's going to put them on top of each other. And I can select everything in here and hit this guy to lay it out nice and neat for me. Okay, so what I can, uh, oh, now the next step is going to be to get my UVs out of Maya and into Photoshop for texturing. So I select my can, go to UV, UV editor, and then here's my UVs that I made in a previous tutorial. I'll go into UV shell selection mode. I'll just select this all here. And then I'll go to uh, image and UV snapshot. Now, uh, I did 2K textures on my can. I'm going to say that you're definitely going to want to do uh, 4K textures on uh, your can uh, because I have the finished textures right here and or it's, uh, well that's still the vector uh, that's still the vector text if I go into here and and you can see when we get into the like the smaller text on here we're getting like really blocky and distorted and uh, same thing goes for a lot of these logos or losing uh, losing a lot of the, the finer details uh, because I just don't have enough resolution for it which like this texture is definitely passable but it would definitely be better if it was well uh, better so, like I said, you're going to want to up this resolution to 4K. 
I would recommend outputting at a PNG, but regardless, I'll go to here, at which point I go into TCAN, and I can say T can body UVs save and then I'll hit apply and close and you can see it's saved out that PNG and I'll do the same thing for the lid go into object mode UV shell select all this image UV snapshot which again I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave this at 2048 but I highly recommend you make this 4k and uh, I'll do TCAN lid UVs apply and close once again you can see it output my image and I can close my UV editor and go into Photoshop and now I can begin by bringing in my UVs which I got my body UVs right here just drop that right into Photoshop and then do TCAN lid UVs and by default they're going to be quite hard to see so I recommend making a second layer and filling it with black just hitting alt delete to fill that with black and you're definitely going to want to name your UVs layer so you don't lose track of things alright and with that being said let's get started now, um, it would take me way too long uh, for the sake of the tutorial to uh, do all of these to completion uh, with, with the grunge and the everything uh, right before your eyes. So I'm going to give more of a rough overview as to how I made the various pieces of this texture and then you would have to do a more in-depth version yourself so uh, so first things first it's like how did I make these lines uh, which if I open up uh, you know what? I'm just gonna close this because I don't need that open for anything um, ta -da. All right. So what I'm gonna do? I'll go into my pictures. I'll go my reference. Okay. So just I sort of want to assess what I want to look for when texturing, like what I'm gonna need. Like uh, I'm gonna need the barcode on the bottom, this little schmutz from where the price tag sticker was taken off, uh, yeah, gonna need these lines, logos, gonna want the full layout done, scratches, uh, this change written in marker, go over that, of course all the dirt and the dust, uh, but first I definitely want to just start uh, layering in my general colors and my lines and things like that. So, what I did was uh, TCAN body UVs. Oh, no, no, no. What I did was I made a new layer and then I brought in the image of my TCAN. And then I know that these like triple line parts align themselves with the corners because of how I modeled it. And I basically just sized 
the image here or the can to match that of one of the layouts that would be it and this seamlessly wraps around from one side to the other and hold on this definitely still needs to be smaller I'm gonna want it to be about there ish and yeah something like that okay and then I just traced these lines using the pen tool which isn't too bad uh, but before actually but before we get there what I want to do is I want to lay in my basic colors which yeah because I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here uh, what I want to do is lay in my basic colors that I want to use so basically uh, I know that I'm gonna want this gold color I'm gonna need like a blue for a lot of the like a blue green rather uh, for all this scalloping and like a lot of the lettering and I know I'm gonna need like a like an aluminum color uh, for all of the rest of this so what I did actually is I looked up the AI standard surface shader in the Arnold user guide and then in here I went into base and the reason I went there is because here in the metalness section of the shader they give you all sorts of colors to use for the base color and the specular color depending upon what metal you're trying to use so what I did was I actually got this swatch uh, for aluminum because that looked like a good color to use I brought that into Photoshop just pasted that little dot right on in there and I used the color picker to grab it and then I just filled this entire space with that color which would be the same thing here then we need to address which parts we want to be gold and to get a good gold color I again just used the color picker on here and just grabbed a pixel that I thought would produce a color that I could work with and would be good and then I just used the rectangle tool and laid it in so basically right down here and I can double check my UV map to make sure I'm putting it in the right place and I can see I got a little space here in between the shells and so in Photoshop yeah I just gotta make sure that this rectangle ends about there and it does so I got the gold in there and I'm gonna see what else is gold on uh, on my can here and uh, well for the tea can nothing else is so I just need the gold down there and you can see that reflected here my finished version where I don't need the gold anywhere else but then in my tea can lid uh, this one is the top so that's going to be gold in there and then the edges and then the one edge is gold which I know this is the wraparound crimping so that means this part is going to be gold here uh, okay, that's basically that. I can grab all three of those layers and lock them. I can do the same thing here on the body. That's my base colors. All right, and now we can start worrying about things like uh, now we can start wor worrying about things like these lines here. So basically 
uh, what I'll do first, actually, is I'll do the scalloping. Which, what I did was I got the pen tool, uh, which, once again, for this fill, I can select like a green from in here, or I can just set it to be something that like I think would be appropriate, whatever works for you. And what I did was I made the basic shape of the scallop which I suppose I'll do over here and I went one click click and the center up and over Oop. Uh, there you go. and closed it up turn that stroke off and I'll clean up this shape some and then hit alt and then if I hold down shift it'll keep it nice and symmetrical and I made that sort of curve and then once I had this shape for a single scallop which uh, ideally you would count these pixels so that you know exactly how many you'll need in order to divide your resolution by that and then what I did was I just aligned this to the edge and then to sort of do like a step and repeat, which you can do just using like the D key in Illustrator. But here in Photoshop, uh, I'll do Control Alt T, which will let me make a duplicate like so. And then I'll hit this checkbox. And then I hit Control Shift Alt T. And with all of those keys held, I can do Control T and step it all the way across shift alt t and step it all the way across but i mean you can see that's kind of ridiculous to some extent so what i can even do then is do control alt t on this whole thing match it up end to end and then check mark and control shift alt t and step this larger piece all the way across and then hopefully it'll match up perfectly right on the edge which that just happened to work out nicely without me doing any sort of purposeful counting uh, in my uh, final version that I did ahead of time this actually didn't work out very well at all I actually cheated a little bit and stretched this last one which that's not really good to do because that'll that little bit of distortion will end up looking like you uh, have some UV distortion but in fact I just uh, cheated to make sure that the edges matched up perfectly so this is actually better than I did before but Effectively, I have this shape now, though, and then uh, to get the scalloping on the bottom, I can just uh, do a duplicate that's just alt and dragging to make that duplicate, and then I can say edit, transform path, flip vertical, and we're good to go. Line that up. All right. And... Then, uh, 
then actually you'll see even with just this in place, which let me see here. Ah, yeah. Which just this in place. I can start to get a pretty decent result. So let's attach this to our shader with just the uh, the scalloping and the lines and such, which I'll get back to the lines in just a second. But yeah, so I have my AI can body right here. And I wanna plug this into my base color and I'll go to file and then I'll go into my TCAN selection, which is right here. Open. All right. And now that's plugged into there. And I can plug this into there. So AI CAN body, assign material to selection, which to see your, uh, your texture on your object, you just uh, turn on hardware texturing here, or you can turn it here underneath the shading tab but uh yeah just that sort of methodology in place if i were to hit render i can already sort of get a pretty decent result which i have a lot of these things rendered ahead of time which this is after i finish doing all of the words as well and the brush metal but it already will end up looking kind of like this as long as you're careful and also this is my seam right here so you can see that I succeeded in making a seamless texture uh, which I did following the same methodology I just showed you and now yes for all of these lines which I'll definitely want to name this scalloping and I'll do like scalloping one and two and group those scalloping okay and And then there's also scalloping on the base of the lid. So I can take one of these, go into here, drop it in, I can go to, I should have grabbed the other layer, but I can just flip this one, transform path, flip vertical, put this here. And once again, just make sure it aligns with my edges. Pixel perfect. And all right. Which I'm gonna wanna make sure that I turn my UVs off when I do this. Hit file, save as can lid like color like base color something like that save and then similarly I can apply this to my lid shader color file tcan lid base color open all right now that's on there and then oh, well that's not gonna show through without me panning up Fresh render. Uh, oh, did I never apply my T can lid material? AI can lid. There we go. 
now it would show and all of my colors are uh, much the same and looking pretty good all right now finally to address those lines I made them using a pretty simple methodology here uh, basically what I did uh, was yeah just with this aligned which I'll move this over the scalloping I just took the curvature pen tool which is super handy for doing this kind of work and no stroke make sure my fill is the same that I use or, or, uh, for the scalloping or maybe I'll make it uh, like more of a green and like uh, like so and I and just one by one I just clicked or actually I don't want any fill I want the stroke to be this color and I changed my caps to be rounded and I changed my alignment to be centered and I just went around and then I would draw a curve and hit enter and then I would start again on the next line going around and then when I got a curve I was happy with I would hit enter Just did that for each curve going around and then hit enter and I'll show you exactly how I arranged that within Photoshop so uh, so I did like a greenish color for these and then for these lighter lines on the can I just used white uh, because how a lot of how these lines show up is determined based off of uh, reflection and things like that. Especially for these lighter lines, I definitely wanted to just use white. And here, I got my fancy lines section, which I'll turn off all the grunge. Don't need that. Uh, So I got these so basically yeah I made one whole section of which let me I made one whole tile of this green and white lines like so and then I rasterized this into a pixel image for tiling I basically, hold on, let me turn off this section, yeah. And I just organized them into various groups as I did different sections of the lines, which are, and each time I would just use the, I would get my group 
and I would go uh, and I would make a duplicate and then I would go to transform and I would flip horizontally uh, horizontally or vertically to mirror it and then I just placed it after I traced everything but yeah until I effectively got a tile like this and you can just see how each bit of it is grouped and then I would like duplicate it and place it and all right so look at this and then I made a duplicate that I rasterized but here I'm gonna take this into here so you can kind of get an idea of how this tile worked and basically you can see here that like I traced it and I made sure that it aligned generally well over here with where it is supposed to and then I uh, I actually used these corner lines that I have for modeling the can to align things. So I would get it in line and then I was actually counting pixels to make sure that this was one pixel away on either side from the edge there. And then I just, and then I can see like that there's two pixels away here for this. And then I would hit, just like I did the scalloping, control alt T. duplicate it and then again just making sure it's like that same two pixels away on either side there and you can see with my lines I was a little bit sloppy but basically then I just duplicated it along the line until I got the uh, the texture that you see here and again as long as uh, you match up your pixels correctly and you can even do some general math to figure out how wide things are and uh, make sure that it will meet up perfectly end to end so that it will tile across and uh, again you can use your UVs to sort of match up and make sure that your pixel perfect where again if I bring back my UVs in each section I try to make sure that I generally lined up the same way uh, okay and then for the logos what I did was I found them online and uh, I image traced them in Photoshop so all of these logos here are uh, vector that I uh, vectors that I image traced in Illustrator and then brought them in from Illustrator to Photoshop and just put them in place. Which and for uh, this text that I put on here, as you can see, I still have placeholder text for a lot of the smaller stuff because I didn't have the time to properly transcribe it. Uh, but I made sure to match like general like line width 
and uh, find a letter that roughly matched. Uh, I used, and I used other approximations for the text, like for tropical green, I just used like courier, and I used the same blue that I used in the scalloping. Uh, and then let's see what else is going on. I used Cambria for that, but y you can use any text approximation that you think will function. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, and then just laid it out in what I thought would be roughly the correct places. And all right. So next up, uh, next up, the next big thing is this brushed metal texture. Because if I look at the image of my can, or rather just like the images of my can, you can see that this brushed metal texture is fairly prominent. And I can create a brushed metal texture in Photoshop with relative ease. And I want to make it a size that will tile in all four directions because I also want to try and make this uh, seamless from end to end. So what I did was I just made a new one right here and you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Uh, so I got this uh, I believe this is just white, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's just white for my background layer. And then what I did was I filled it with that same gray that I took from, I, I filled it with that same gray that I took from the Arnold documentation then I went up to filter and I generated a noise. I just went to add noise. And this is the exact same setting that I had, uh, which you can add more or less noise. And I just made it mono monochromatic. So it's just all grayscale. I hit OK. And then went to adjustments levels and then I just sort of rather I changed my output levels to just output lighter values so that way I don't have a ton of contrast in my noise but to turn it into the brushed metal texture from this noise I just went up to filter blur Motion blur. Uh, I don't know if this is set to anything different by default, but I uh, I just set it to zero, which will make it go perfectly horizontal. And then I just changed my distance until I got a brushed texture that I was happy with. And then I hit whoop, then I hit OK, and then it gets a little odd at the edges when you do motion blur like that. Like you can see, it doesn't quite blur the the very edges as much as I would like. So all I did was I just hit Control T to bring up transform, and then holding down Shift, I just stretched those parts out of view and then I have my 124 by 124 pixel square in this case that I saved out saved as uh, brushed metal then I went back into here, which these are my uh, 
fancy lines, as it were. And I applied that brush metal texture to everything. Move these into there. by aligning it to the corner because I want it to meet perfectly at the edge and then so that it's seamless what I did was I made a duplicate said edit transform flip horizontal brought it over to meet perfectly halfway at this edge and then I just merged these layers duplicated them Brought the copy down. Brought it exactly to the edge over here. Image or edit, transform, flip vertical. And that way it also is seamless vertically because they're mirrored against each other. And then I merge these and I turn this to multiply and that added the brushed metal texture to anything that I put underneath this brushed metal copy and uh, with all of that the scalloping the text the logos uh, and the brushed metal layered in and put on so uh, until I got a texture that looks like this which I'll get to these two things in just a second uh, basically with all that put on which I'll put on the image that reflects that here in Maya base color with brush 2 yeah, it's this one open do the same thing with the lid replace that base color or T can lid base color 1 Uh, and then you can see that that sort of stuff is layered in and with all of that put in uh, without making any adjustments to our shader yet whatsoever other than making the texture and rendering it it renders like this and like so and I'll get to this change right now uh, for doing the lines on the top here in Photoshop for the TCAN lid, I file open TCAN which again, let me see here. Turn off the grunge. All right, yeah, which doing the all these fancy lines, I did the same exact thing. I uh, had this image that I brought in, and I just traced the lines, and then I just duplicated them and rotated them around. 
Okay, and to do the change texture, I did two things. I, well, once again, I just color picked from here to get a green that would look appropriate. And then first to make a bottom layer, which, you know what, I'll do this in here. which I just scaled it and arranged it in here until it was roughly in place. But to make a bottom layer, what I did first was I just got my brush size to be about correct and then I made a few circles where I thought it sort of looked like uh, perhaps it stopped here or there. And then I got this smudge tool. Turn the strength down some. And then I just smudged around all of this material And so that'll give me some, like, smear marks, so to speak. And then I picked a brush. I think I just went into here and picked some sort of, like, smudgy brush, which I think you may need to... Uh, Uh, like I'm, I, I believe I brought in all the uh, legacy brushes in order to get these options. All right, and then I sort of use that, and I went into my brush settings and I put on things like wet edges things like that and then I just sort of painted around with this roughly the same way that it would have been written and then adjusted the opacity on one and then that gives you a pretty decent effect uh, I was a little more careful when I did it the first time uh, when I was really taking my time uh, but that that was the general method I used to get the effect uh, here which You can see here's that smearing, which uh, I did two passes of smearing in this case, where I, and you can see in some cases I made some blockier sections. I just made sure to have some dots where uh, it looked like the like the marker paused for a second. And then you can see I have my opacity at 60% on this one and 100% on this smear one. That way you can still sort of see through it so that's like semi-transparent to the text. And 
All right, and then same thing, just brush metal texture uh, across here on the lid. And okay, so basically with those two things, uh, with all of that done between the lines, the change, uh, putting logos in, uh, which you're if, if you're a student of mine, I'll try and provide for you. And the scalloping and everything, and that's basically all of your base colors taken care of. Which, once again, without doing any edits to your shader, will look like this. Now, uh, oh, hold on, and actually I'll do one more thing, which is just placing the, uh, which is just paste, uh, placing the barcode and such on here. Which, to do that, what I did was I went to my images. Oh, that's right, I had a close up of each. Here, I just got the polygonal lasso tool, which uh, actually, oh. hold on, pardon me, uh, layer, rasterize. Layer, so I don't have any issue deleting things. And went to here, selected all of this, I think I just did like a diagonal-ish selection, like that. This selection, and then if I go to select, okay, shift control I, and then delete. All right, but then I'm still left with, uh, but then I'm still left with a little bit of weirdness here on this side, and then to sort of delete some of this uh, I think I did some just using the quick select tool and deleting things but then which I'll, I'll, I'll even leave some of that there but then what I did to get a sort of cloudy effect on here was I actually used like a cloud or powder like brush here to sort of eat away at it a little bit while maintaining some of that. Adjustments like I brought the saturation down, and this will just and then brought the contrast up to get it nice and white, and then I generally placed it 
where I know it ought go here on the bottom. And you want to place this layer above your brushed metal layer or uh, because you don't want the brushed metal texture going on to your barcode. And then I followed much the similar process for the other sticky part, uh, which I, I don't need to waste your time getting into now. It's just, uh, yet again, when I was erasing on this, I made sure to uh, use some sort of brush profile that would allow me to uh, get sort of a hazy selection on this. Anyway. All right, so yeah, with all that, that's basically all the general diffuse color laid in and and taken care of. Now there's one big step to start to transform this into what we need in order for this to properly be uh, uh, metal. We want it to look like metal. So uh, basically the next step is with those textures made, which again, at this point, I'm assuming you have this as a texture, and you have, uh, should just consolidate these over here, and you have this as a texture. Uh, so yeah, with all that stuff in place, in Maya, if you just change your metalness from 0 to 1 on both of these what this will transform into is this which uh, which is a big step up in in terms of look It'll, it'll drastically change how it looks, and basically with those two steps alone, it's starting to come into place uh, with how we want it to look. So, next up uh, would be to just make uh, a specular color change, uh, which is uh, fairly straightforward. So, with the specular color, what you're going to want to do is, uh, well, the specular color and the base color basically define how your metal is going to look uh, as defined here in the documentation. And you can generally get an idea just from looking at these values of the base color versus the specular color uh, that for the most part, the specular color is just the base color, but lighter, at least in the case of metals. This isn't necessarily the case with all things. As a matter of fact, it, with non-metallic materials, uh, your specular color should generally just be white or some other form of monochromatic uh, change. Uh, generally, your specular color won't be any color uh, other than white unless it's metallic, but we're dealing with metallic objects. So, uh, basically, I further defined my specular color by decant body by doing this, where I just grabbed my uh, where I grabbed uh, my image and then I just brought it into Photoshop where you can see I just boosted the brightness by 76 and then that just brought up my specular color uh, to be brighter which then did this change to my, my can. So it went from this which is just metalness to this which introduces my specular color, which the change is kind of subtle, but it's definitely there. And then another specular color change. All right, and then that's what we're getting into, grunge. Okay. So, yeah, so that's that. 
uh, uh, just the specular color, which I'll make a note that uh, in this case where I eventually added the grunge elements also uh, for all of my grunge elements which in this case I just sort of uh, as well as my uh, barcode I made a clipping mask of the two and uh, and made those white because like I said I I basically only wanted the specular color of my metal to be colored, so everything else has a monochromatic specular color, which I used the clipping mask to make that white, which isn't very obvious when I have a very light color uh, being used as the specular color for the rest of it. Uh, and I did the same thing for the lid. All right, but now is when we want to start getting into the harder aspects of this all here. Uh, which is layering in all of the grunge uh, to sort of dirty up this teacup because we're not or this tea can because we're not trying to make pristine objects. We're trying to accurately represent our source material. So, I made sure to take detailed images of everything that we're trying to capture. So we got like watermarks on spots, uh, this grunge, uh, some light surface scratches, and things like that. Again, watermarks on the side there, on here, uh, some s scratches and like rusty sort of stuff on the tops and at corners here we have a whole lot of dirt which you can see there's like scratches through all of that gook we got scratches here on the side and I don't really have time to go through painting all this from scratch again but I'll so show you some general tools uh, to use which uh, I, I got some grunge brushes as well as like some scratch brushes uh, from just just for free online and I just downloaded them from uh, I believe brush easy and then I also gathered some elements from the pictures that I took and then layered them in in the right places uh, so for example with the top grunge here there is this little bit of grunge that I got from the photo that I used and what I did there was I brought in the photo that I have from my ortho of the top with no lid and I kind of just brought it in generally aligned things then I select or uh, layer I rasterize the photo and then I got a selection from a color range by just you know like picking some pixels on here I reduced the fuzziness quite a bit uh, and then hit okay so that I could sort of get a whole bunch of this like modeled gook and then I hit control C and then control shift V to paste it in place 
And then that got me some grunge that I could start to work with from my photo. But you have to make sure that afterwards that you come in here and oh, that you come in here and none of this is entering your other UV shells. And yeah, there are some of that other stuff. So like I, I got some grunge like that and then which again you're going to want to make sure you stay organized with how you're layering all of these and then other grunge I got from using something like this powder brush here and oh, on the wrong tool I had that on my eraser and I could sort of paint this into place and Again, you're going to want to get rid of all of this extra spill from bleeding into your other shells, but I'm not going to be too worried about it. i get rid of that. So I'm not going to be too worried about it for the sake of time in the tutorial. And then to layer in that scratching that I got in here, there's all sorts of grunge brushes that you can use, which to import brushes that you get from online you can go into here in your settings and then import brushes and then just select whatever ABR file you want to put in and then it'll get its own category in here which is also what I did here with these like claw brushes which I'm just gonna pop this out and then what I did was to get some general scratches I would get this claw brush on my eraser pardon me yeah which something like this which by default we're looking way too big there okay and then you want to use your brush dynamics uh, to adjust your spacing and things like that uh, for all the, that's the brush tip shape I, I'm adjusting my spacing then I can go to shape dynamics I want to change my size jitter, uh, my angle jitter, and all of this, my flip X and Y jitter will create a sense, of, but yeah, and all of this will create a sense of randomness, scatter it, uh, I can up my count higher and lower, I can make my count jitter, and then uh, yeah, I think, no, I don't need this at all. And I think that's really all I'll need. And then with that in mind, I can sort of erase and then that'll like randomly place scratches throughout the grunge that I've placed into the top so that I can sort of get that build up and then all of that like scraping away and you can also do this with like uh, with other brushes like similarly I could 
come into here with this like larger grunge element brush that I have here and erase and get that sort of effect there. And this sort of layering with your brushes, which that's not a particularly attractive one. Let's see. Nah, I don't really like those very much. Uh, but I will. But yeah, you can sort of erase and things like that with your your various brush tip shapes in order to get these sort of layers of detail, and you can apply the same sort of ideas to how you end up painting your grunge on your object and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, and I can group this as top grunge. And Okay, uh, and then I also did similar methodologies for placing uh, fingerprints, like I got, uh, which I won't go through everything here, uh, tip shape yeah I just like picked a fingerprint that I thought would look right uh, which I'm gonna have to be using my brush tool be sure of that yeah I just picked a fingerprint that I thought would look right I picked like a sort of milky tone for the fingerprint and then again I just went into like my shape dynamics or like my spacing, my shape dynamics, uh, increase some size jitter, the angle, the flip, uh, and things like that. That way, as I go around and stamped fingerprints on my model or on my texture, it would sort of be all sorts of different shapes and sizes and give me like random results and I basically did that all over the model and then fingerprints you don't generally want them to be pretty subtle so I only made my opacity like 10 on them and same thing for and then for uh, things like the water droplets I have some rain photoshop brushes that I made work for me which like water marks like so and basically what I did here was I would just again sort of just like stamp my water marks in places uh, but again this is of course like way too many, so then I would get my eraser tool and I could use something uh, and I could use another like powder thing perhaps to sort of give some subtlety and like variation to things like mostly get rid of it but hold on let me just make a black layer real quick so you can kind of see what I'm doing there where yeah like I'm mostly getting rid of them but sort of adding some like subtlety to how they're stamped on there so that it's not just all one note uh, but then I also don't want these all over the place, so there are some places where I do just want to like get rid of them all together, 
and things like that. And I basically followed that sort of methodology for placing watermarks all around various parts of my object. And lastly, in terms of just painting the grunge, uh, there's just one other thing that I used, which was uh, you can use some of these like scatter brushes that uh, Photoshop comes with, or there's even some, <clears throat> yeah, there's like splatters and there's also like bristles and charcoals that you can use. Like, let's see, yeah, charcoal, like 14 pixels, which I just picked some sort of like brown. Again, I gotta use. Which again, yeah, I just picked like some sort of brown like that. Or. Maybe even like this one. I don't know. I'm not gonna get too particular with it. And then I use this to like paint some like rust and stuff and like the the blunt scratching on certain corners such as yeah such as like this stuff like I would come into that location in Photoshop and get into the corner and I would just paint but similar to how I was doing before uh, I adjusted my spacing so that it won't just paint streaks and will instead like scatter it and again changing things like my scatter my count my shape dynamics, so the angle jitter, the flip jitter, that way it's all random as I paint. And then in this case with the rust, I also want some like texture dynamics with the like, yeah, to add a little bit of saturation jitter and brightness jitter. That way it will paint me like non uniform rust schmutz. And then, oh, I definitely need to take my scatter, like, way down. And then that way I was able to, like, sort of paint in places where I just wanted it to be kind of messed up. And when I painted the nicks on the edge up here, I just up my scatter a little bit and things like that and just, like, painted along certain parts of the edges. And the more time you put into painting, the more, like, subtlety you can get out of your fine details. And, all right. And, again, a uh, similar methodology was used to uh, making the scratches. It was just using these, like, various patterns and then for the scratches I would just get kind of like a darker gray color and then I went in and painted but then again with the same sort of scattering and all in all this is what I ended up doing you can see that same sort of methodology that I was talking about uh, I can bring my UVs back and you can see where I'm painting those little marks on the edges at various points uh, again, my watermarks are very subtle and scratches and all that. All right. So I did that on the, uh, on the body and of course on the lid, which the lid also had a good deal of schmutz, just like the, uh, the area around the lid did where, yeah.
Okay. And then, once you have all the grunge painted in, it takes it from this to this, where I now have my specular color and my grunge. And you can see that that sort of schmutz that I put on the corner there and down there, which I perhaps could have gone a little bit further, made it even more obvious. But I got the dirt on the top, which... Okay. All right. And then, once you have that in, and again, when I did the specular color adjustment, I made this clipping mask for all of uh, uh, for all of my grunge and so that I can make and then I just filled this with white so that I can make all of this white up here which I'll show you exactly how I did that uh, I just went into here I had all my grunge grouped together and then I got that. I should be able to control. Uh, so I just got my grunge group. I copied it, control C, and then use control shift V to paste it in place. And then once I had that in here, uh, I merged all of this layer, just hit merge group into one big grunge group. Okay. And then to make a Clipping mask on a layer. I, I hit this down here to create a clipping mask, and then uh, with this, I also desaturated it so that it would do everything evenly. So, because otherwise, it can clip your colors differently. Delete. And then I hit Control C. And then you alt click the clipping mask to access the clipping mask. And then I did shift control V to paste everything in place, which it's not showing up on the white, but either way, I want to invert this. Or, hold on. That's not what I. I need to select this. Control A, then Control C, then I'll click on the clipping mask, then Control Shift V, and that'll drop that in there. Then I can hit Control D to clear my selection, uh, and that should be more or less correct. Where now I could select white. And then hit Alt Delete and fill it with white, and then it'll fill all those spots with my with my uh, with white. Which again, you got to make sure that you include uh, the uh, the barcode and this sticker gook in your clipping mask. All right, so. But, uh, anyway, uh, but you want to follow that same, so hopefully you already have that done from, uh, yeah, hopefully you already have that done uh, from when you made your specular color adjustment. The next big thing 
is going to be making a metalness map. So body texture, which follows that same sort of functionality. I think what I did when I to make these files to begin with, what I would do is I would I just saved a second copy of this and then I just deleted all the layers that I didn't need and then okay and then what you're gonna want to do to make a metalness map is your uh, well first I should explain how metalness works exactly in regards to your shader here so basically metalness at one means that uh, well yeah that, that it will lay completely into that metalness attribute uh, to give you these sorts of looks on materials but you don't want things like your grunge and you don't want things like your barcode and such to look like uh, uh, to look like they're made out of metal because they're not they're dirt and and paper and all sorts of other things so what you need to do instead is uh, you need to uh, make a map to control them and the way you do that is uh, well basically we know from the slider that metalness at one makes it look like metal uh, and then that means that metalness at zero makes it look completely non-metal so and we need to have attributes in our texture to control that so one uh, so uh, everywhere w where we want it to be completely metal, which would be most of it, we want it to be white because it will read white as one, and it will read and it will read black as none. So you can see here, I have black where I uh, where I have my barcode placed in my texture map, and that's because I don't want my barcode to appear to be made out of metal. And similarly, I want all the grunge to not appear metal. So uh, what I did was the same sort of methodology as before, where I selected uh, all of my various grunge, my fingerprints, my watermarks, uh, my scratches, my dirt, my barcode, uh, just anything that I don't want to appear as metal. And then I pasted that into my clipping mask. Uh and then filled that layer with black and then I put that against a white background and pasting all that into here and keeping that white background will make any place that's white appear fully metal any place that's d black or dark gray will appear fully uh, well non-metal uh, and then what that does is that does this change here where this, everything right here, still has the metalness applied evenly to all of it. Then I made a metalness map, and suddenly all of my dirt stands apart. All of my grunge stands apart, and you can see that uh, because of all the dust on the lid, that my lid dulls, and all of, and like I said, all this grunge stands apart. And you can see things like my watermarks show up all of a sudden in my diffuse, and yeah, and then here's that same uh, same effect from a different angle, and then here's the bottom of the can to demonstrate how my barcode does not look metal, uh, and neither does the sticky part. This does not appear metal, and it, that's what separates it from the rest of the texture is that metalness map where again uh, you have it as uh, black is no metalness white is full metalness but now how do you take this texture and plug it into your shader which 
Oh, at this point, I uh, should have already put in my specular color, which uh, is here. And I would do the same thing on my lid. Applying my specular color on my lid. Okay, and now uh, we want to apply the metalness map. So, same process, except there's going to be one little twist. Uh, metalness, and then file, and then I'll navigate to my metalness map. Open metalness which which one is this? Hold on a second. I'm getting a little lost in my layout here. I can select this and let's clean that up. Okay, I'm looking for my lid metalness map. Uh, lid metalness v1 yeah which you can see yeah which you can see that I, I included change in my uh, black selection uh, for my metalness map for my lid and you can see that modeling there. And okay. So, yeah. But your metalness map won't work properly by default if you painted it the same way that I painted mine. That is because metalness is a one, uh, it only accepts a singular channel input whereby so by default it's going to hook it up to your alpha but our map is not driven by our alpha our map is driven uh, by a color so you can do one of two things you can either click on this node and say alpha is luminance uh, which will translate which will just use the luminance value as if it were your alpha channel as well or what you can do which I'll do it the other way here is I can instead of hooking in my alpha I can just hook in one of any of these RG or B inputs uh, from and that should also achieve the same effect because these are all just singular inputs as opposed to uh, this, uh, as opposed to uh, the three color input, because you can see it won't let you put your out color into there. And since it's all monochromatic, black and white, uh, R, G, and B should all be the same, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, but yeah, again, you can either put in alpha is luminance, or you can just hook in R, G, or B, and either should have the same effect of... Uh, of making a map that looks like this function. And all right. So next up we're getting there. We got metalness, we got specular color, we got our base diffuse color and that uh that leaves two big things left over and that would be the uh, that would be the diffuse roughness uh, or the specular roughness and a bump map. Now, what specular roughness does is it's going to make certain parts of it less uh, shiny, so to speak. So if I go into here, you can see the default 
of 0 0.2 is reasonably shiny. And then the more you increase it, the more dull your surface looks. Uh, because the specular highlight gets diffused across the surface. And basically we want to use this because all of our dirt and our scratches is not nearly as shiny as, uh, as the rest of the can. So we need to do something in order to make that dirt translate uh, into uh, being more dull than the can. Which I should be able to give you. Which here, that is exactly what's happening. Where I increase my specular roughness and then that begins to further dull where I have different, where I have my dirt and things like that. And. Okay, so how to create a specular roughness map? Well, it works the same way as metalness to an extent, uh, where we're going to use black to white to generate the map and uh, use our various channels. So, here, I'll open up my specular roughness for my body. All right. So, what I did, which this is not white, this is my, my gray layer. So, basically, you can think of this brightness as controlling uh, what your specular roughness will eventually be. So, by default, it's going to be at 0.2, uh, which uh, would mean that uh, for your can, you would, uh, in order to start making your roughness map, you would want, uh, oh, uh, that's just being carried over from, uh, because I, I iterated, I, I just saved out my metalness map and continued. Uh, so, basically, for this to read at the default of uh, two roughness, I would put in 20% uh, into my brightness and then hit Alt Delete. But you're actually going to want it, your roughness to be a little higher than that so you can make it more like 35 or even 40 or higher and see what makes you happy, basically. Uh, and then, yeah, again, Alt-Delete will fill it with that color. So, and then we once again want to use our grunge to make a clipping mask, which you can use the same clipping mask that you used to make your uh, metalness map. Only this time, instead of filling it with black, you're going to want to fill it with a gray that is just lighter than whatever you used for this base gray. So, uh, and because you basically want everything to, uh, because all this lighter color will appear as more roughness and therefore more dull than the rest of the can. So you want all of your grunge and again your sticker included in that, which uh, if you add like subtlety to it and like uh, more changes in your values, you'll get better quality textures and more results but at a base level I can just go to here which again has this as its clipping mask and I just want to select you know a lighter color so let's say I want it to have six roughness so I can add 60 or maybe even 65 in the roughness and then I can hit alt delete and fill it with that color uh, so let's say it was black before uh, because this was my metalness map and then again just filling it with a color and now this which I would do again both on this process both on the body and the 
uh, and the lid, I would make my roughness maps, which, again, the ones I used, like I have this guy here, which you can see I have a few iterations all at different values as I was seeing what worked and gave me the correct looking roughness. And again, my roughness map here. And then I'm gonna plug those into each shader. Specular roughness file. Image name. Specular roughness V5. Yeah, it took quite a few iterations to get it reasonably right there. And again, it's gonna to wanna to plug in your alpha into specular roughness. So you're gonna to want to go into, click on this node, your file node, and go to alpha is luminance. So that, which you can even see just on this shader ball here, as I check it on, off and on the difference. And then same thing here, specular roughness, file, I'll select the one for the lid, open, and again, alpha is luminance. Okay, and now there's just one more map to make after specular roughness, and that's the bump map, uh, because now you want to have some surface breakup to your model. So. I want to take it from this and then to this, where now all that dirt is starting to pop off, all that grunge that I painted, and my scratches start to scratch in. My map's a little high because I don't necessarily want to see this much of an edge just because there's ink there, so that's not quite correct. But then also my dirt is starting to pop off on the top there. And you can see that sort of breakup really taking root there and sort of popping off there and there. And it'll also make the edge here stand out on the barcode and this schmutz and then all these scratches and stuff like that. Which it looks like I might have wanted to go a little bit heavier with the grunge color personally, but I didn't have enough time to really go back and edit things. So anyway. Let's get into the bump map. So what I'm going to want to do is, uh, well, again, I'll just sort of open up my file here and just walk you through what I did. Okay, so the basic functionality behind a bump map is this. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is ignoring all of uh, this stuff. Okay. So yeah, ignoring all of this stuff, basically what you're going to want to do is this. Uh, you're going to want to fill this bottom part with like your base layer, your background, you're going to, want to fill this with a 50% gray. So you can go up to here, change your brightness to 50. Uh, you want your saturation to be zero. Hit OK. And then, I don't know, let's pretend, yeah, like this was white. And then I will fill it with that 50% gray alt delete and the reason when you, you want to start with a 50% gray is because when you're uh, when Maya goes to read your bump map that you're making uh, your bump anything that is lighter than 50% gray is going to come outwards and anything that is darker than a 50% gray is going to go inwards so uh, so that's why, like up here, all of this dirt appears to be popping out, 
where this scratch goes in. So, um, so here you're definitely going to want to separate out your scratches, uh, which I think all I did is to do that, I just got my scratches, which I, hold on, let me, uh, no. Yeah, uh, when I painted all of my grunge, you know, I kept it nice and neat, so I have my scratches layer all in one spot, so, what I did to make sure my scratches went in is I just copied this layer to my bump, which is what you see before you. So, which again, I can just go scratches and I could say like control A to select all, control C to copy them, and then went to my bump and just control shift V paste in place but then uh, they're still a little light so I wanted them to go darker so I went to images adjustments brightness and contrast and just darkened up my scratches so that they would go deeper into my model and then the rest of the grunge like all that just gets to lay on top so once again I just made a clipping mask uh, which in this case it does also include my scratches uh, but note that I put my scratches layer on top of this layer that way I can darken my scratches and here I uh, just got the rest of my grunge and I just filled it with uh, with a gray that was lighter than uh, than the, mil the the medium gray of 50%, which I definitely didn't go uh, that high with it. Yeah, I just went 60, so just barely, because I want because all, all this stuff is not very extreme. So basically, all of this, I just wanted it to subtly go out just a little bit. So even just 10%, so even 60 might have been a bit extreme to fill this with. Uh, but And then in the case of my... Uh, and then in the case of my barcode, I might have even wanted to go out bigger. So in the case of my barcode, I might have even wanted to paint this to be lighter. So that this really bumps out further. Uh, because that's definitely thicker than like the rest of this grunge is, but the the important thing is is just that scratches are darker than your fifty percent gray, and the rest of the grunge is lighter than the fifty percent gray. That way, the scratches will go in, and everything else will come out. Now, as to how to plug that into your shader, I can select my big shader here, and then go to geometry and then bump mapping and then select file and then by default it'll take you to this screen uh, which to adjust the bump depth which one is going to be way too much you're going to want that to be more like 0.1 and then if I click on the file node you'll see the alpha is luminance is checked on by default in this case because this uh, also needs that to function that alpha that single channel input and then I can just grab my uh, bump map, which I definitely have one. Oh, uh, where is it? I got my TK. Okay, whatever. Uh, 
I'll just save this out. Save as uh, PNG. Save. Apply. Okay. Because this should function just well. And pump V1, open. And now that'll be a functioning bump map. And now I want to do the same thing here bump mapping, file, bump depth. Again, I'm going to want this to be like 0.1 or even less, maybe point like 0 0.01. Because uh, by default, like I said, it's going to be like way too high. And lid texture bump V1. Open. And uh, yeah, that'll be that. And then that's that's your shader and entirely set up uh, with everything controlled by the various maps. So you would have your base color, a metal in this map, a diffuse, uh, a specular color map, a specular roughness map, and a bump map would be all of the layers to the shader all put together and then that should give you some fairly realistic results. In some cases I might have wanted to lay off a little bit like I'm a little heavy with the watermarks and such uh, or the dirt could have been more obvious in different areas uh, especially when I threw this into some different lighting setups depending on the angle you can really see fingerprints which actually this fingerprint looks pretty nice and then but then like in certain lighting setups I got stuff that's coming out way too much but yeah some of these fingerprints the, the fingerprints are the right amount of subtle in this case uh, but other things I definitely could have done better, but we're we're looking good overall. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's the sort of evolution as things go. Where this is your diffuse, then metalness, but then specular color, and then we do a metalness map here to take the grunge and separate it out a little more. We up the diffuse roughness and then finally our bump or we have that subtlety in the diffuse roughness. So it's that it's that sort of interlay it like that interlocking between all these different attributes that ends up giving you your nice polished final result. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's your, that's your full setup between the two shaders, which, sorry for making this uh, super long, and sorry for even perhaps not going into as much detail as you would like while making this super long, but uh, I didn't want to take forever, but I also wanted to really break down the process to some extent. Uh, yeah, and hopefully you'll even be able to make it look better than... I did. Uh, all right, that's that. Uh, okay, yeah. Hope that was helpful and informative. Oh, and uh, you have a good, a good night, good evening, good day, good life, what have you. <laughs>